Welcome back to the Chad Hasty Show. High school football playoffs have already begun. And uh, tonight, I believe the final version of the West Texas Friday Night Scoreboard Show for this season. Joining us as he has all season long, Stephen Orr for the West Texas Friday Night Scoreboard Show. Stephen, how's it going? How's it going, Chad? It's a great day to play some high school football. Looks like we're going to have great weather tonight. Yeah, it's uh, it's playoff season. Playoff season, What it, I guess it kicked off last night uh, with uh, just an, an amazing game, a, a true battle between Shallow Water and uh, Tornillo. You're, you're going to go there right off the bat. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm pushing those buttons. Oh, one seed Shallow Water, 10 and 0. 0 and 10 Tornillo has to play in the playoffs because there's only four teams in that district. Uh, Shallow Water had that sewn up middle way through the second quarter, 63 to nothing. Oh, wow, that's, you know, and it, was, it, uh, was it worth the trip? Who had to f- travel further for that game? But, um, probably Tornillo. The game was played in Andrews. Uh, but, you know, my deal there is I hope nobody was hurt. Right. Uh, there's no reason for that game to be played. But, but anyway, I digress. I did actually went back and looked. If you look over the last three years, uh, when you take one seeds taking on four seeds, you, as you're well aware, I'm vehemently opposed to four teams in the playoffs. Yeah. But I did look at 288 games, a one seed versus four seed, over the last three years in Class 2A through 4A. Would you care to guess what percentage of four seeds won? Hmm. It's probably going to be a little higher than you think, but still. 12%. You went high. Okay. 11% of the game. All right. Uh, four seeds are 34 and 254. So you're saying there's a chance. So, yeah. So you're saying there's a chance. 70% of those games are just of the games where the one beats the four are decided by 28 points or more, which I classify as a blowout. Yeah. Why are we playing those games? Money. Absolutely. What about player safety? Because when you have mismatches like that, there is a great potential for people to get hurt. And I'm, but anyway, uh, Shallow Water gets the big win. They'll advance to play the winner of Tuscola, Jim Ned, and Whitesboro, who play tonight. Uh, Jim Ned eight and two, four and one, and Whitesboro seven and three and four and two. So that's a matchup. But Shallow Water. <laughs> Probably got to have a gl- over glorified practice for at least half of the game. Right. But there's other playoff action. And, you know, the number, what surprised me when I got to put this week together, the number of Thursday games. There, there, there seemed to be a lot. A ton of football played last night, especially when you get down in the smaller classifications, which isn't usually how that works. Uh, but uh, when we look at. Um, the playoffs, uh, Lubbock Estacada got the big win over Fort Stockton last night. Both teams were 8-3. and three. Coronado was 3-1. and one. Fort Stockton 4-2 and two coming out of that district. Uh, but Estacada, the defense was spectacular. Fort Stockton not able to move the ball at all. And Estacada gets the 24 to nothing win in that ball game. Seminole played Fabens, and uh, they got a big 42-7 to seven win over Fabens coming out of District 1. And, again, this is one of those – the, when that District 1 is not near as strong, District 1, 4A, Division 1 is not near as strong as uh, the top two teams there in 2. But uh, Big Spring is also in District 2, and they're 2-8 and eight on the year. So they play Clint, who is 4-6 and six and won their district. That ought to be a dandy. No, you win. No, you win. <laughs> no, you win. But uh, Lubbock Coronado has a big game tonight. They're taking on El Paso Chapin and uh, Coronado eight and two on the year. Chapin is at four and six on the year. I think it'll be a pretty. If, if Coronado will show up and play their game, uh, they should have a good chance to win that ball game, and they would advance to take on the winner of Azel and Colleyville Heritage. Uh, Azel nine and one on the year, eight and zero oh in district play, and probably going to advance out of that one. Uh, looking at other teams in Coronado's district, maybe not in the Lubbock area, but Amarillo plays El Paso de Valle, and um, 
then Abilene Cooper takes on El Paso Eastwood. And if uh, things go like they have in the past, you know, usually the teams from up in this area do pretty well against the El Paso teams. Yeah. So looks like both of those have a decent chance of advancing. You drop out down into District 2, 5A Division 2, Canyon Randall taking on Fort Worth Southwest. Southwest is 7-3 and three on the year. Randall is at 4-6 and six on the year. Uh, but that district, that could be another one where the strength of the district could be a little bit deceiving. Lubbock Cooper at 10-0 and on the year, 5-0 and overall. They take on Fort Worth Eastern Hills, a team that is 3-7 and on the year, 3-3 three and three in district play. And I think Cooper, if they will show up and, and snap the football, they should win that ball game. And then they will take on El Paso Austin if they do advance, as Austin beat Kennetia last night, 35-14. to uh, drop down into uh, Division 4A, Division 1. We mentioned Seminole beating Fabens 42-7. to They'll take on the winner of Canyon and Gainesville. The Canyon Eagles are 9-1 and on the year, Gainesville 4-6. and So it looks like uh, Seminole is on a crash course with Canyon next week, and that would be a great ball game. Andrews got the big win last night over San Elizario, 57-6. to uh, Andrews was 8-3 and three on the year, and that was another one where Andrews simply just outclassed them, dropped down into uh, Division Two, and one of the better games on my board tonight has the Leveland Lobos taking on the Monahans Lobos. Leveland 7-2 and two overall. They finished their district play at 4-0. District champions with a big win over Lubbock Estacada last week. They should ride that momentum uh, to, uh, I think, probably a victory over Monahans. Monahans is a team that took a step back this year. Usually they're up at the top of their district this year. They're 5-5, five and 3-3 five, three and three in district play, kind of a rebuilding year. But they have the tradition of being in the playoffs, and, and they uh, know how to win in the playoffs. So even though that record may be down a little bit, I think that has the potential to be one of the better games uh, this week if Level End should win. This week they'll take on the winner of Iowa Park in Hillsboro. Next week, uh, Lubbock Estacado we mentioned won 24 to nothing. They will take on the winner of Graham and Godley. Graham is seven and three on the year. Godley four and six, and I think that's probably going to be a pretty lopsided game. So that's kind of where Estacado is looking. Snyder takes on Dalhart. Snyder comes into the year eight and two, five and one in district play. They've had one of the best seasons they've had in recent memory. And they're taking on a Dalhart team that comes out of the Panhandle. And District 2 of 4A Division 2 is just not that stiff a district. I think Snyder gets a big win uh, probably going away in that one. We drop down into 3A Division 1, and here's where we have a lot of scores. Denver City played Littlefield last night, 8-3. Uh, and three. Denver City taking on 3-8 and eight Littlefield. Another example of why ones don't need to play fours. 59-14, to 14, uh, Denver City gets the win there. They will take on... Eastland, who defeated Boyd last night, 49 to 27, and that should be a pretty good ball game next week. Shallow Water beat Tornillo, 63 to nothing, and again we said they'll take on uh, the winner of Jim Ned and Whitesboro next week. Brownfield and Slayton, this was a dandy of a ball game last night. I thought it would be the Slayton Tigers come out with the win there to advance, and they will take on the Brock Eagles, who defeated Breckenridge, 34 to 27. Tulia beat Markle last night, 26 to 24. Tulia advances; they get a playoff win for the first time in 13 years, and they will take on the winner of Crane and Cahoma. The Abernathy Antelopes took on Anthony last night. Abernathy 10 and 1 on the year, and they rolled over a 1 and 10 Anthony team, hmm. 68 to 21. Wow! There's another example. They, Abernathy now advances to take on Childress. Childress is ten and one on the year. They beat Ballinger last night, forty-two to sixteen. And that ball game right there, even though we won't be talking about it on the radio next week, that is going to be an awesome football game. Hmm. Um, and I, I think one that could be really good. You look at Ilu; they got a big win last night over Alpine, forty-two to six. They had improved to eight and three on the year. They'll take on the winner of Cisco and Spearman. Cisco nine and zero on the year, seven and zero in district play. Spearman six and four, and two and three. And I think Cisco will probably advance there, and Ilu will have their hands full next week if they end up playing the Cisco Lobos. Drop down into two A. And you have New Deal last night beat Sunrise forty eight to nothing. 
Uh, New Deal, the district champion out of District 2, taking on the four seed out of District 1. It was 48 to nothing. They will play the winner of Stamford and Lindsay. That game played on Saturday. Uh, Sundown defeated Sanford Fritch last night, 59 to 30. They will take on Holly, who defeated Chico, 69 to 15. And then the Floyd Air Whirlwinds will take on the West Texas, Stanette West Texas Comanches. Uh, Floyd Data 8 and 2 on the year, West Texas 7 and 3 on the year. Uh, Stanette, a very prolific offense. Floyd Data has been playing very good defense all year. This is going to be a really good game uh, that will take place tonight up at Bushland. And then you drop down into Division 2. Uh, Tahoka takes on Vega. Tahoka's at six and four on the year. Vega's at five and five on the year, and I think Tahoka has a pretty decent chance of coming away with a playoff win here. Uh, Smyer takes on Stratford. Stratford's five and five on the year, three and one in district play. Smyer is three and seven on the year, but three and two in district play. Uh, but they're really going to have to show up and play good ball tonight to get the win there. Groover took on Crosbyton last night, and uh, it was sixty-four to eight. Groover gets the win there. Um, Sudan takes on Wink, and they'll play the winner. They'll play Groover if they should win. And then Rawls takes on Clarendon. Rawls is at nine and one on the year, five and zero oh in district play. Rawls having one of the best seasons they've had in recent memory. They're going to take on a Clarendon team that's six and three overall, but they were only able to put together a one and three district record. So I think Rawls has a pretty good chance to advance in that one. Lubbock Christian in private schools takes on Arlington Pantago Christian tonight. Uh, both teams are six and four on the year. Uh, Lubbock Christian three and two in district. Pantago was three and one, and I think that should be a pretty good ball game. And Trinity Christian is taking on Arlington Grace Prep, and uh, Grace Prep is four and zero oh in district play. Uh, Lubbock Trinity was two and three, and that's going to be a pretty pretty tough ball game for them. But but maybe they can pull it out. Yeah. So. A lot of good, a lot of good games. A lot of well, there's some not so good games uh, out there, but it'll be interesting to see where this playoff season goes for uh, some of our local teams. Well, you know, I mean, that that's the thing. You know, we usually do the deal. What are the games on the board? And I've got a few, but man, it's a little more difficult this week yeah. because there are a lot of lopsided matchups. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, eleven percent of the four seeds have a chance to win. Yeah. Historically speaking, but I love the. I think the Leveland Monahans game could be good. I like Floyd Data West Texas, Tahoka Vega, and Rawls and Clarendon are probably the four games that I think uh, have the best chance to be something special. Hmm. There'll be an upset out there somewhere. I'll be wrong about one, but I was wrong about Sundown and New Deal last week. For heaven's sake, man! <laughs> Stephen, uh, appreciate your time. Appreciate your time uh, all season long, and uh, we wish you all the best of luck tonight. Well, Chad, thank you, and we appreciate all you guys do for us, and uh, we'll talk to you again next August, okay? All right, right. sounds good. Have a good good, uh, show tonight. All right, thank you. That's Stephen Orr, West Texas Friday Night Scoreboard Show, final show of the season tonight on KFYO. High school football playoffs.